it's Arlene from Arlene's Creations and today I'm in my kitchen and we are going to be making soy candles. What you're going to need if you would like to make some soy candles is of course some soy wax. I use a GB 464 which I get from Candle Science. You're going to need some uh, stainless steel pitches with a stirrer and I only use these for my candles. You're going to need some fragrance, a scale, the dots to put the wicks inside the candle jars. You're going to need candle jars. I get my can these are the only candle jars I use. It's for my recipe that I have and I get these from the Dollar Tree. You're going to need your wicks, which for my recipe and this jar and the amount of fragrance that I use, I use CSN 26, six inch pre-tabbed wicks. You're going to need some Vibar 260. You're gonna need your, your laser thermometer and you're gonna need um, these metal that hold the wicks on in place. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I have my camera propped up on two pots because my tripod broke. So I'm trying to see how it's focused, if you can see what I'm even doing here. If I pull it back a little bit. All right, so first thing you want to do is get your containers ready. So I have taken off the tag on the bottom, washed them thoroughly, and dried them. Now with these sticky, and I get these at Candle Science as well. Everything for my candles I get at Candle Science. So you just want to take these pre-tabbed, um, these sticky tabs, and put it to the bottom of your pre-tabbed wick. And you want to line it up as much as you can directly in the middle. So you want to get it very centered. Then I just take a knife and I press down on it to make sure it's very secure. And then I take one of my metal holders and I just push it in like so. Some of them are bent so they don't work. So then you got to grab another one, but that's how you want it. All right. So you want to put your sticky thing on the bottom of your tab, put that in the center of your jaw, and then hold the wick in place with one of these metal, um, I don't even know what they're called. I'll look it up and put it in the description below, but, so you want to do that to all of your candles. I'll show you one more. You take the sticky tab off, put it on the bottom, peel it. Stick it right in the middle of your jar as much as you can, nice and even. And once you get the hang of doing it, you will become better at it because the first ones I started making, like the wicks, were well, very uncentered. <laughs> but you'll get better as you go. And then just stick your... Oh, I broke that one. So you don't want that to happen have to use this now because it's very hard to get out of the so I'll just hold that one up by, by that I'll do another one sorry about that that happens once in a while hasn't happened to me in a long time but it did now because once you stick this in there that they're very hard to get out so I'll just make this candle and hold the wick up like that and I'll use that one for myself see so I'm going to continue to do this to all the to the other three and then we'll get on to the next step okay so all of my jars are wicked and once you um, attach it you can just play around with it and you know move it to where you want it once it's attached and make sure that it's really centered 
So the next thing is to melt your wax. So in here I have about eight cups of wax. Um, you could put as much as you want in there, depending on how many candles you'll be doing. <clears throat> but I'm going to take the temperature and it's at 205. So I need to let this cool down a little bit because you cannot add the fragrance until it's 185 degrees. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to tear out my container and put it on. This glares from these lights, I'm sorry. I'm going to put it into pounds and ounces and see it's at zero. Now, for this, I'm going to be doing two candles with the smoke and odor eliminator for my cousin Denise, two candles in the black cherry, and two candles of the orange and chili pepper. That's my favorite. Um, so I'm only going to do enough wax in this one container for two candles. So each one of my containers they call them 12 ounce status jars, but I use nine ounces of wax for each one. So nine and nine is 18 ounces, which is one pound, two ounces. So in this container, I'm going to pour in one, one pound, two ounces of my hot wax. All right, so I'll put this back over here. And like I said, I teared out. So this is teared at zero. So now I'm just going to... And I have a mat down here so the wax doesn't get all over my floor. All over my rug, because you don't want that. So let's see how much this weighs. Hmm. I'm pretty good at this. What did I say? One pound two ounces it's one pound two and a quarter ounces so i'm just going to leave it like that and let's see the temperature 191 so i'm going to shut the camera off and i have to wait for this to get to 185 so a couple minutes i'll stir it a little bit and within a couple of minutes it'll be cool enough to add the fragrance i'll be right back okay so i have all of my containers measured out with one pound, two ounces of um, hot wax, the soy wax, and what I'm going to add to each one is like six or seven little tiny dots of this Vibar. And what it does is it just enhances the wax and makes the throw a little bit better and makes the scent, I don't know, but just for some reason if I don't use it. I feel like my candles aren't as good so and it, it's very little bit so it's like a teaspoon of them per pound of wax so they'll melt right in very nicely you can just put it in you know in the pot that you're melting your wax in I actually got this. This is so old that it's ridiculous. I've been making candles for many years. This is a contraption that I got from upstate at a garage sale. The guy was selling a whole bunch of candle stuff that he got from a uh, storage unit that he had purchased. So when I was upstate, I believe it was for my Aunt Diana's funeral, my cousin Kelly said, oh, this guy has all candle stuff. Let's go to his house and see what he's got. And right away when I saw this, I said, oh, I'll take that. So this is just a, um, what do you call these, like deep fryer type pots that you can buy that he converted somehow with the pour spout and it comes out here and it's, it's worked for me for years and years and years, and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't know how to make my candles without it. So, I'm going to take the temperature. Oh, where am I? There I am. Just going to take these out for 
now. Alright, they're a little low. Well, this one was 160. 153. So I'm going to add my fragrance now. You're really supposed to add it at 185. But I've done it when it's, um, what do you call it? When it's a little cooler and it, it works out fine. But if you're just starting out, stick with 185 for your wax. And then you want to pour it into your containers when it's about 135 to 140. That's what works best for me. So I'm going to put my container back on with the wax in it. And I'm going to get it to the pounds and ounces. And it's at zero. So this first one I'm going to do is the Odor Eliminator. I'm trying to hold the camera as I'm doing this. Let me just put this down for one second. I'm so sorry. There we go. And I use one ounce of fragrance per candle. So I'm just going to be pouring this in until it says two ounces. There we go. Two ounces. Now I'm going to be stirring this immediately. There, so it doesn't spill. I'm going to set that aside until it gets to about 135, 140, then I'll pour it. In the meantime, I'm going to put this one on. I'm going to tear it to zero. I don't know that's on. Okay, and now I'm going to do my black cherry. I hope I even have two ounces in here. Yeah. So I'm just going to do two ounces on this one. This is a very strong fragrance. I can even go less with this one. This one is really, really strong. I think I'll go three quarters. Yeah, because sometimes if I like this one, even though I love it at night, if I have it lit, it sometimes gives me a headache because it's way too strong. But some people like really strong candles, so, so I'm just going to set that over here and stir that real good. Now, all these fragrances I get, like I said, at CandleScience.com. I get my wax there. I get my... The tabs, you know, the sticky tabs. I get the metal tabs, all my fragrances. Um, this heat gun, this uh, laser temperature taker, whatever you want to call it. It's called a newbie. I got that from Amazon. But my Vibar, I do get from, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the place. Because that you buy one bag, it lasts you years. I mean, you put a couple in in a batch. So, oh, Nature's Garden. That's where I get that one from, Nature's Garden. So I'll have everything in the description box and the link below. And um, this way you'll know. So now I'm going to do the two ounces of the orange chili pepper, which, which this one is my absolute favorite and my number one seller. This is a very strong fragrance as well, and it is delicious. There we go, two ounces. Let me cover that up. So now that all of my waxes are scented, I'm going to wait for it to get down to like 140, 145, which it should be already by adding the fragrance that cooled it down. And then I'm going to start pouring and I'll show you how that is. I'll be right back. All right, so my wax, let's take the temperature again. 
is at 135, which is good. But I like to pour between 135 and 140. You could even go up to 145, but you don't want to really go too cold. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour until I get almost up there. And wax does shrink when it dries. So that's why I like to fill them a little bit higher because the, it will shrink and get lower. I bought a candle one time from a woman and the wax was all the way down here. It was like a half a candle. I'm like, what the heck is this? For like 15 bucks, the same size. I'm like, well, that's a rip off. So never again. So I like to fill my candles a lot. And they shrink just enough that you have that ridge at the top so you can light it there you go now what I like to do instead of having to clean these all the time right after you're done um, pouring I take a paper towel that was in the in the thing there and I just wipe it off really good and then wipe all that out inside of your container because if you let it dry then it's a pain in the butt to clean so you just want to really good wipe it out with a I don't know if you could see in there but now it's totally clean and the steel really doesn't keep the scent from the candle before so in a day or two this will smell like nothing right now it still smells like the orange chili pepper but so that's what you want to do you want to clean them right away while the wax is still warm in there and you don't want to get it hot so that's a really good tip it makes up it makes it so much easier So this is the smoke and odor eliminator one, which I have to fix this stupid wick now. It's probably just going to fall down again when I pour the wax in, but... Oh, you know what? i got to give my cousin two candles, so... I'll do the black cherry in that one. And when you pour your wax in, that's a good time to make sure that your wicks are totally straight. I usually do like 20, 30 at a time, but I only had six candle jars. I got to go back to the Dollar Tree and get more. And my niece wanted um, a couple for her to put in her friend's basket for her friend's engagement party. And um, I'm out of candles, and my cousin Denise wanted two of the smoke and odor eliminator ones. She loves those. So, it's probably my husband calling, but I'm in the middle of it, so I'm calling back. There, so I just stood that up straight so that it stays. And, again, you want to clean out your... You want to clean out your spoon really good. Get all that wax off of there. And you want to clean out your pitcher. Okay. All right. And the last one. Oh, boy. I'll be back. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry about that. I'm back. That was my husband. What's going on over there? What's the dog doing? Is the cat in the house? Oh my god, every day. Just make sure you take care of the dog. Like, I don't take care of my dog. I don't get him. Men. Oh. Alright, so this is the last one I'm pouring. Now, when you do candles, um, they have to cure for about 
I like to cure mine for a week before I light them. So, but at least five, six, seven days, you want to you want to let them cure. You don't want them to, like when these dry, these will be dry in a couple hours, but you don't want to light them right away because you're not going to get that nice um, throw that you're supposed to get, you know? The hot throw or the cold throw. And all of my candles have such a beautiful hot throw and cold throw. My cousin Catherine says that my candles are better than Yankee Candle. <laughs> she loves them. Her favorite is the sugar cookie. So I'm just going to straighten that out. I do have my candles, some of them, on my Etsy page. Uh, La uh, Lathers and Lace Soap Company .com. So I do make them and sell them along with my soaps. So every week I'm going to I'm going to be doing a DIY tutorial on either a soap or a candle. Today's my candles. Every week I'm going to be doing a farmhouse tutorial because I'm redoing my house into like the farmhouse decor. So and plus I'm doing a um, helping my sister-in-law Dari with my niece's baby shower, which is. Uh, farmhouse themed so I have a lot of projects for that so I actually have a lot of videos made for that but the shower is April 14th so I can't show any of them yet because even though she knows about the shower because she lives in Arizona so she has to come to New York um, and she picked out the theme she doesn't know what we're doing for it so it's gonna be a surprise so you'll be seeing the favors. It's a Jack and Jill, so you'll be seeing the favors, the farmhouse themed favors for the um, women, for the men, um, things for the dessert table, things for another table that we're doing. We're just doing so much. All right, so that's all my candles that are made. And like I said, they really do have to cure for about I would say at least a week I like to cure mine for seven days and as soon as these get nice and hard um, I'll print out my labels on my computer with my printer and once it's labeled I mean I can label them tonight when they're hard and wrap them but you know just have to tell my cousin and my niece tell the people you know that not to light them uh, for, for, you know, until like next Wednesday at least or next Tuesday. So there you have it. My uh, tutorial on how to make soy candles. And all the, all the ingredients that you're going to need and all the tools I'll have in the description. In the description box below. So if you'd like to make them, you know where to buy everything. And again, I will be doing... Uh, posting videos on Wednesday and Friday. Now, if, if something comes up with my schedule, I might be doing them Monday and Wednesday, but definitely every Wednesday. If not Friday, then I'm going to do it on Mondays. So I'm not sure yet, but every Saturday, I'm going to be doing um, a simple Saturday tip. Uh, last Saturday, I did um, how to do your refrigerator, how to... How to um, make it easier for you to clean your refrigerator when you, it's time to clean it out. So if you want to go take a look at that uh, fast and easy tip on how to um, clean your refrigerator real quick, you could go take a look at that. But yeah, so I'll be doing two videos a week. One will be either candles or soap, and then the other one will be a DIY with house decor or something like that, and then the simple Saturday tips. All right, so thanks for watching, everybody. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscription button. Please like my video, please share, um, hit the notification bell so you know when my next video is being posted. And I really appreciate all my subscribers and my watchers. And have a great day. Let me see if I can get in here to say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great day. All right. I'll see you all soon. Bye. Okay, my so my candles are now um, beautifully set, and.
and I wiped off the jaws if there was any, um, you know, candle drippings, whatever, so everything's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the wick. You want to do it like a quarter inch. <laughs> just flip to the back. That's so funny. You just want to cut it like that. These are the labels that I cut out. Now these two are for my niece Jenna. Well, one's for Jenna, one's for Megan. And they want to give it to their friend Gabriella and Valdo. Who um, they're going to put it. They wanted to put it in a basket. Um, with all, They bought tons of stuff to put in a basket for the engagement party. But they wanted to do the baskets tonight. They're not getting the candles till tomorrow. So I actually put them in um, nice gift boxes with a gold ribbon. Because um, the invitation that I saw was all in gold. So I printed out the labels that said... Love is in the air. Congratulations, Gabriella and Valdo. I really wish I had... I need a tripod because my tripod broke. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. But... And I do all my labels on Avery.com. So if you go to Avery.com, you could just print out your labels. And these are actually... These are actually clear labels. Let me see. Yeah, these are clear. Two 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 eight two two. So I usually get them online, but I used to get them at um, Staples, but then they weren't carrying them anymore. And I used to get upset, so I just go on Amazon and get them. So as you can see, I peeled off the label, and it's totally clear. Now I'm just going to take the candle. Let me see if I can maneuver this. If you can see what I'm doing. This really stinks without a uh, tripod. I need I need a tripod. And I'm just, oh, I'm just going to try to center it. And you put it in the middle first, and then you go down on both sides. I'll see you that there you have it. A personalized, beautiful candle. And it says, love is in the air. Congratulations, Gabriella and Valdo. So I'm just going to do the other one. And you can... Um, you could do anything, um, wedding, happy birthday, Mother's Day, like, whatever you want. Like, it's endless what you can write and what you can design on your labels. It's endless. So let me just put this on, like, so. Oh, nope, see, cook it. And we just want to do the middle first. There's a little bubble there. Let me see if I can get that up. You don't want to press it down too much. If there's a little bubble. Well, this side is good. This side I'm not happy with. I mean, I know Gabby for years and years and years. <laughs> It's uh, my niece's best friends. There you go. Do a little something. Oh, I smudged it. I think I smudged it. I can actually get that off with a little bit of alcohol. So, but I mean, if this was for a customer, I would definitely peel that off and um redo it but i know how to get this off with a little bit of with a q-tip and a little bit of alcohol and it's not that bad so i think i'm just gonna keep it i'm so tired i'm in the middle actually today of doing like four videos 
that I still have to put together and do everything. So I, I just want to get the stuff done. And I have to get these boxed up and beautiful um, for my nieces because my husband's going to drop them off in the morning to them. So... But you see that little smudge? I'll get that off. It'll be absolutely perfect when I'm done. All right, so I'll show you how I box them up in a few. Thanks. All right, so now that you have your bow perfect, you see how long it is? I always do that. I need to really learn how much um, to do on a bow. But... Let me put you up on something here. No, I need a little higher. Maybe this. Hold on. Just want to show you what I'm going to do. I put that back. Alright. So now what I'm going to do is... See what I'm talking about? How much ribbon I just wasted? I normally don't do that, but... Oh well. Now, see how gorgeous that is? Now, the top is way too high. Like, I don't like that. Let me see if you can see that. Oh, let me put this under here. Like I said, my, my tripod broke. So now I'm just going to cut this like right here. And put it out like that. Gorge. So pretty. Love is in the air. Congratulations, Gabriella. And a Valdo. Very simple, very elegant. Just with a beautiful gold ribbon. And, alright, now I'm going to put it in the box. See, this is the box. And it has tissue paper and just white curly stuff. Now I'm going to lay that in there. Take some of this out, though. 